There's a lot of Mars. Peace, love, Hotep. I want to send Islam to all the Moors worldwide. All the Moors. Especially the active Moors. But, you know, we'll just give a shout out to all the Moors for now. Noble Drew Ali told the Moors that you're not Negro, Black, or Colored. You're not. Negro, black, or colored. So Noble Drew Ali said. People take that for jokes. You know, want to call yourself black still. And defending it. Defending the fact that they're something that they're not. And then one, want to blame people when they get their ass kicked. And two after they get their ass kicked for being Negro, black, colored, came over here from Africa as a slave, they still stay in that name. And want to know how come stuff only happens to our people. I want to blame everybody else. Instead of looking at ourselves and realizing that we're the ones it's us. It ain't, don't even bring anybody else in this right now. It's us. Why is it us? Because, you know, we're the founders of civilization. So if we're the highest at one time, then we can also be the lowest. And being the lowest is where they have had us for the past few hundred years. Until this man came by the name of Noble Drew Ali, who was a Cherokee. Not a black guy came over here on a slave ship. He was from the so-called tribe called Cherokee. So if he's from the tribe called Cherokee, that means he didn't come over here from Africa. He's always been on this side. And he told people that you're not Negro, black, colored. You're not that. Why? Because those names were given to slaves by slaveholders. So anybody who continues to play the game that our people, dark-skinned, melanated people, are black, African, or whatever, know that they work for the slaveholder. Because they're calling you the same name that slaveholder put on you in order to steal your birthright. In order to steal your birthright, in order to steal your birthright, of being the Aboriginal indigenous people of the Americas specifically, they called you something that you're not, and we ran with it. What we begin to realize when we start studying is that there's no such thing as people don't know. Right? There's people who know and then there's people who refuse to know. There's no bit of ignorance. There ain't no ignorance. Nobody doesn't have access to the information that we have. The information anybody could find out. And when we check the records of all the international people, right, because, you know, as we talk about all the time, right, I work in the school board and I work in an adult school. And the adult school is where people come to learn ESL and English from grade 9 to grade 12. And the only people who don't know English are people who aren't from here. you know we're not talking about Europeans right? we're talking about nations of people that are melanated that come from other places with different languages they come to this school to learn English math whatever adults not high school people not children adults And all these adults 
regardless of what language that they speak, they have some type of version of more in their language. And all these people know that people who look like us aren't called black. Why? Because in their country, we're not called black in their country in whatever language they speak. So this is a specific thing to North America. This concept of people are black, people are African, people are adjectives and people are continents. That is not a reality around the world. That is only an illusion in North America. And once again, a Cherokee, an individual who was from this side, came to tell you, hold on a second, you're not what they labeled you you're actually the aboriginal and indigenous people and we'll call you Moors because you you have dark skin but when you look up more it'll tell you something when you look up black or more it's going to tell you something relative to you know who we are as a people so we have these overseers and the job of these overseers is to make anybody that they can, anybody that they can, get them to abandon their own birthright as Moors. Whatever they, they have, they have no sympathy. Right? They are going to keep you in mental enslavement and classify you as these terms that are not identities of nations of people. We always have to put Noble Drew Ali up, you know what I mean? We ought to rep him because, you know what I mean, he was a great man. And he gave us certain information in order for us to realize what we're up against, who we're up against, and what we're supposed to do about it. In the reading called To the Members of the Morris Science Temple of America, Noble Drew Ali let us know about these disagreeable individuals. Islam, these are the instructions from your holy from your prophet Noble Drew Ali. Be faithful unto your forefathers, divine and national creed, that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you sow in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world, and his judgment is now on, but the weak comprehend it not. The end of time is drawing near. So says Allah to his divine prophet, I, Noble Juali. And that is why many hearts have been turned to stone, and many have eyes to see but cannot see, ears to hear but cannot hear lest they would be confounded of their sins. These are trying hours now, dear Moors, and every evil spirit is moving, and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid, and to cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not what you hear or see, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your profit. Watch your enemies, dear Moors. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest, and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temples. Act accordingly, and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet, Noble Juali. So certain things were put out there so when people go and they study Noble Juali just like they study Marcus Garvey Elijah Muhammad W.E. Du Bois Frederick Douglass whoever they get some info so they can know exactly what this is about but our people like to follow sellouts our people like to follow overseers because our people have been conditioned to be followers not leaders 
Why? How do we know that our people are conditioned to be followers, of, not leaders? Because they call themselves names that are below humanity. So if your name is below humanity, then you, you, you get no respect. As, as we go through today's um, information, we want to make it clear that we're not here to try to prove something. We're not here to prove. We're put information out. If people want it, they pick it up. If they don't want it, then you know what I mean. Stay Negro, black colored. There's not nothing personal for me. I I, I could care less what you do. Is your birthright? If you hear the information about Noble Juali and Mars. And you're gonna not listen to that because you're listening to some guy. What this guy says that he's a doctor. This guy says he's a professor. This guy says that he's the black whatever. And you know what I mean? Go right ahead. I guarantee you, all those people are overseers, and they work for the other side that's been enslaving you, physically, financially, economically, mentally, any way that you could think about. These individuals had a direct hand in your ensave, enslavement. These are the people who would be the so-called leaders. Any leader, any leader, anybody speaking on behalf of trying to liberate our people, and they're going to call you every single name in the book but deny that your Moors, they work for the other side. As soon as they start talking against Moors and what Moors teach, know that they work for the other side. This is not just talking stuff about people. This is what it is. And again, active Moors, Moors that are active, meaning Moors who have this information and they exercise with it successfully. Regardless of whatever risks they're taking. Those individuals are the ones that are giving this to the people. And what other people do, say, or whatever is irrelevant, they're just going to be used as beating sticks or as pinatas for us to prove to people how much of a fraud they are. And that people have to stop playing follower, stop chasing after these clowns, and go study for yourself so you could know for yourself. Because, you know, we tell people, don't hear what we're saying. Make sure you go check. Just go with what we're saying because it sounds good. Go check and make sure that what we're saying is in harmony with truth. And when you do your research, you'll you'll quickly realize that. Now Nobu Jali got assassinated by Moors. Simple as that. Right? Overseers, people working with the other side, killed Nobu Jali in 1929. After 1929, there was all this confusion, Moors movement, who's the head of the whatever, who's the blah blah blah. So we're just gonna read a letter. From May 12, 1931. Now, the only individual who has any claim whatsoever after Nobu Juali is a man by the name of Emili L. So when you hear that name, E, Mili, L, know that that's the individual that Noble Jolly said, here's all the stuff, you know what I mean, make sure you carry out what's supposed to be carried out. And then he took it and did what he was supposed to do with it. And then there was other people who didn't even have any conversation with the Prophet, but they're talking about Noble Jolly gave me the stuff. So let's, you know what I mean? And then that's why there's all this confusion today in the Moorish movement. 
So we just want to put this letter on the record from uh, Wendell Green, Wendell E. Green, attorney at law. Mr. E. Mealy L. Dear Sir, kindly acknowledging receipt of $120 for professional services rendered in the case of Morris Science Temple of America, a corporation by C. Kirkman Bay versus E. Mealy Ill. This is to further state that the verdict was entered in favor of the defendant, which was yourself, E. Mealy Ill, by Judge Hibbert in the municipal courtroom 913 on May 7, 1931, case number 1748990 or 1746990. Respectfully yours, Wendell Green. So, these individuals who were against the successor of Noble Juali took him to court, municipal court, but, you know, still took him to court. And the verdict came back, and the ruling was in the favor of Emil Eel that he's the actually the legitimate individual. And everybody else in that case is a fraud. But they're still around today. Pretending like they have some authority. And then people back them. When the reality is, there's not supposed to be any followership of anything right now. This is the time of knowing. And when you know, you act according to what you know. If you don't know, you better know as soon as possible. Because not knowing is not in so-called people classified as Negro, Black, Colored's best interests. Not knowing is not in their best interest. They need to know ASAP. Because they've never known. They've always been told. And again, our position as active Moors is to make sure that the people get their stuff. So they can handle their affairs and stop expecting somebody to handle their affairs for them. We put out a few classes ago. Dictionary. Just go do your research. Black man means A, a Negro, and B, the devil. Black man means a Negro and means the devil. And then people are going to say, oh yeah, the European made that up. Or, yeah. Whatever. Moors taught the Europeans. Go ask them and they'll tell you that Moors taught them. So forget all that crap that black power people want to talk about. European. Anything. Hey, they nothing on the planet that's European. Nothing. Because Europe's not even, it's not even a continent. There's nothing called Europe. Why is that the only continent that doesn't begin with A? Because it's not part of the pyramid culture. It's a fraud. But we'll say European just so people understand where we're coming from. Black man is the devil. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go listen to Prodigy of Mob Deep song, Black Devil. Since you'll back him. Right? The hip-hop guy, all that stuff. Okay, sure. Go listen to his song, Black Devil. And recognize that it's his own people that sold him out while he was locked up or whatever. Not come check him, not call him, not, you know what I mean, after he did whatever for them. No, and then don't forget, 
don't forget, keep in mind that it is not even something it's not even something that's that's not in print it's in print he lets you know he lets you know so don't think that is they're just talking some stuff we heard some stuff he knows what's up beyond nation of gods and earths and all that crap that's why i told you who the black devils are but just go listen to the song Black man is also a funeral director. Black man. So clearly, calling yourself black is not really in the best interest of the individual calling themselves that. But there's people that are going to push for you to call yourself a devil. And then you call yourself a devil and then people, you know, treat you like a devil, you know, Try to stake you, get you off the planet by any means necessary. You get mad. You're calling yourself a devil. What do you want? What do you, what, what you want from people? You call yourself a devil and then you get mad when people want to stake you. It's us. Because Noble Jewali came in 1913 and told us that we're not black. We still call ourselves black today. All right. There's this group of so-called conscious people that like to pretend you know like to play this game that we're the frauds you know because we refuse to accept calling our people black and saying black power no because according to science black means death so no I'm not repping black power and no I'm not calling my people black because black means death just go look up black death look that up see what that is and ask yourself how come they're calling that death black and it has nothing to do with people who look like us but it's called black death just go check you don't call yourself black okay no problem now one of these clowns one of these so-called scholars called herself doctor and all that by the name of reggie reginald he put out some crap on this other agent stuff named Sa Netter, who Brother Rami Salam L did excellent video, you know, challenging him on are you agent? Because it seems like you've been taught by all Moors, you got a Moroccan flag in your house, but you're dissing Moors. You got a Moroccan flag in your house. So, you know, is he agent or are the people stupid? Are the people dumb jackasses that the guy who's talking crap about Moors has a Moorish flag in his house on camera while they're talking crap about Moors? You don't think you don't you don't think something's wrong with that picture? You don't think that that's hypocrisy at its heights that the individuals talking negative about Moors, right? The individuals saying that you know Moors use Law dictionaries, Moors use all these dictionaries that come from the white man. Right? Okay. Let's just verify some things with regard to these um these individuals that have their claims of they're not Moors and this Moors and this your birthright. Just just listen. Noble Dwali said my mission to bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government, enforcing our constitution of the United States of America, right? And then you hear some of the most. I positioned people in the order to say, draw me never toward civics. Constitutional enforcement is the highest level of civics. It's not even debatable, but yet people debate it. The deal of it is, when you know this, you don't give them the energy because you know they're there for just what they're doing to create the division. You don't, but you don't get angry. You don't get angry. This is Drew Ali. Drew Ali says, Look, Jerry. Drew 
Wally says this. When you're around a bunch of moors that are not carrying out my law and creating a lot of confusion, get out from under them. Go find somebody that's doing good and help them do more good. He did not play clubism. And he said, this Drawley said this, he said, I am a universal prophet and my philosophy will be universal. I only came to you more because you need me the most. Translation, don't get it twisted. They don't own him, but yet they act like it, don't they? Violation again. You know, these principles are universal. And this is the interesting thing. What you see, all this, also sign that up. If you will start, matter of fact, when we come, when we come to the house for the babies and everything, right? We'll have the babies take, take um, I'm going to give them some stuff for themselves and little notebooks for them to take notes and give reference points. Now, you got Black's Law, Jals, right? Yes. Fourth edition. Right, fourth edition. And you already know, you got the uh, English Heritage Dictionary? Yes. All right, and you've got um, Etymology Dictionary on the English language? Yes. All right, make sure you, your babies have that. It's so easy to take children and give them a fundamental education. And as a matter of fact, a lot of times when you, when different brothers are debating, you know, you take a neutral position because you're, you're an editor. Right. You're a journalist. But for the sake of our people would help to school them and wake them up. For the sake of our people, Sonnetter, it'll help since you're a journalist and you deal with all these people, 6,000, 25,000, 95,000 people viewing your videos, you should probably just wake the people up because you got Black's Law Dictionary at your house. You got Underbridge Dictionary at your house. You got Etymology Dictionary at your house. You got Moroccan flag at the back of the video, but you have so-called Dr. Reginald sitting there with the Moorish flag right there that they're saying there's no such thing as Moroccan Empire and all that, but they're sitting with the flag of the Moroccan Empire in the video. Are they agents or are people stupid? Finite minds cannot comprehend infinite. And this is where they keep our people. They keep our people so dumbed down that there's a Moroccan flag in Sanetter's house. On camera. In every video. He admitted on the record, you can just go to the video, Taj Tariq Bey are the Moors and Hebrew Israelites the same people. Uploaded by Black Magic 363. And just go to the end of the video, 48 minutes, and listen to him on the record state that he has the white man's Black Law Dictionary at his house. He has the white man's Unabridged Dictionary at his house. And he has the white man's Etymology Dictionary at his house. And he teaches his children these things. Or from these things. But they're not going to tell the people that they're Moors. But at home... They're teaching their children about their nationality, their birthrights, about noble Jewali and all that. God damn it, the freaking flag is in the video in his house. Oh, but now y'all are going to be more as people making stupid ass comments on videos dissing more as when there's a Moroccan flag sitting right there. Oh, they don't show you the green star. Oh yeah, they fold it in a way that it just looks like some red cloth just hanging. Play stupid. Keep playing stupid. For this clown, Dr. Reggie, right, we have something for Dr. Reggie, right? For the record, the contributions of the Moors, or oh, this is from uh, CelticCowboy.com, C-E-L-T-I-C-O-W-B-O-Y.com, not Wikipedia, because, you know, some people like use Wikipedia as their source for something. The contributions of the Moors will forever be remembered through Moors heads which appear all over Europe as paintings, statues, and on the official coat of arms and flags of municipalities, religious groups, and noble families. It is important to note the Europeans often portrayed Moors in a positive light, often adorning them with crowns and jewelry. 
The Moor's head is not rare in European heraldry. It still appears today in the arms of Sardinia and Corsica, as well as the blazons of various noble families. Italian heraldry, however, usually depicts the Moor wearing a white band around his head instead of a crown, indicating a slave who has been freed. Whereas, in German heraldry, the Moor is shown wearing a crown. The Moor's head is common in the Bavarian tradition and is known as the Caput Ethiopicum or the Moor of Freising. But the Moor's head, as encyclopedias of heraldic emblems tell us, right, so, so the encyclopedia of heraldic H-E-R-A-L-D-I-C Heraldic Emblems The Encyclopedia just specifically for that tells us it is generally a sign this is the Morris head of law, authority and power indeed taking the head of a Muslim quote unquote Moor was a peculiar potent symbol of triumph in the days when Islam and Christianity battled in Europe and the Holy Land. Some contributors to a very earnest discussion on the American Heraldry Society website suggest that the Moor's Head is a potentially explosive image. In response, others observed that even though the features of the Moor were quote-unquote stereotyped to the point of resembling a quote-unquote cartoon, the image itself was most certainly a bust with a red collar, not a severed head. The term Maure, M-A-U-R-E, derives from the Phoenician term Mahurin, M-A-H-U-R-I-N, meaning Westerners. Now, the Phoenician term, because remember, this doctor by the name of Reggie is saying that Phoenicians are Moors. But in Phoenici, the term Mahurin, which is where Maure, M-A-U-R-E, comes from, doesn't mean black. It means Westerner. Why would they even talk about Westerners? That's Europeans. No, it's not, because Europe's in the East. So if Europe's in the East, why are they talking about Westerners? Who are they talking about? They're talking about the Aboriginal indigenous people of the Americas, the Westerners, because this is the West. And then that's why Morocco is known as Maghrib al -Aqsa. Morocco, the farthest West. Yeah, but Morocco's supposed to be in North Africa. How come... How come the farthest, how come Morocco, the farthest west, is north? Because that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about west, which is the Americas, which is the people who were already here, been here for just as long as there were people on the continent of Africa, Australia, Asia, wherever else. Westerners. From Mahurin, the ancient Greeks derive Moro, M-A-U-R-O, meaning black. So, like we've been putting to people, the term more, like how in Hidden Colors, they told you, well, more means black, so we're black. That's what the Greeks say. So you have these so-called people that say black power, but they're going to put out that more means black, which comes from the Greeks, which are Europeans, pale people, people who they say are the devil. But then when more is quote from law dictionaries, they're saying that we're following the devil, but they're following the devil saying Greek. But this is the game that they play because our people don't think, our people are stupid, our people's minds are finite, so they can't comprehend the game that's being played on them by their own people. Ain't no white man doing anything to you. There's a thing as a white man. It's your own. Selling you out every single time they open their mouth. 
because they're going to tell you about everything and they're going to make up all types of stuff telling you that Phoenicians are Moors. And later, Greeks derive Morikos after them and Latin derive Mori meaning black African. From the same root we derive M-A-U-R, M-A-U-R-U-S, M-A-R-R-A, M-O-R-O, M-O-R-I-S-C-O, M-O-H-R, M-O-R-I-T-Z, M-O-O-R, M-O-R-U, M-A-R-U, M-O-R-E-L-O, M-A-U-R-E-T-A, Mauritania, Mauritius, Maureen, Maroon, Morocco, Moore, Maurice, M E U R C, M E U R I G, M O R I E N, M O R I N, M O R Y A N, M O R E T O, and such. At one time, the whole of the western arm of Africa, what is now West Africa from Libya to Nigeria and around the Atlantis coast, was called Mauritania. The word Mauritania was interchangeable with all the names of what is now Africa. Ethiopia, Kemet, Netjer, Sudan, Libya, Kush, Guinea, and the now defunct Negroland. Since the 11th century, the heraldic term Mori refers to the symbol of an African head, or more specifically, any blackened image of an African or a part of an African, or an item associated with or representing Africans. CelticCowboy.com So the Moore's head represents the so-called noble families of Europe. Now, this guy, this clown, that calls himself Dr. Reggie. That, that you know, his chest feels big right now. Because, you know, Professor James Small talked about him in their little breakfast crap. You know, bigged him up. So he's feeling nice right now. But we're going to shut your crap down right now. Because his last name is Mabry. So when you go on online, just go online. And then you just do the search on... Reggie, Dr. Reggie, Reg Mabry, M A B R Y. And then his stuff's going to come up. Right? So his video is going to come up. And then when you scroll down his Google and all that stuff, is Reg Mabry. Now what we found out very interesting that you know they got all this crap to talk about ain't no such thing as Moors and ain't no such thing as Moors and blah 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 but Mabry the coat of arms for Mabry has a Moors head on it. Now if these guys aren't agents to the highest degree sell out dirty Moors that his so-called European last name that he has right now. The coat of arms of his last name has a Moore's head on it. But they're going to tell you that you're not Moore's, you're black. But his name means Moore though. But they're not Moore's. And you're not Moore's, you're black. But... His family name that he has right now that he's going around the place leaving comments talking BS about Moors has a Moors head on it. These are the hypocrites that you're dealing with right now in the so-called conscious community. People who are either their agents because if your name's Mabry and it has a more set, then that means you're a more. So if you're a more and you're deliberately not letting the people know that you're a more, and on top of not letting them know that you're a more, you're not telling them that you're their mores. 
you're definitely an agent. Working with the other side. And that's just what it is. You say whatever, but hey, Mabry has a Morris head on that coat of arms for that name. And the individual representing that name is not going to say that he's more. And then deny you your birthright and tell you that you're not Mars. If that's not an agent, if that's not an overseer, right, the same one that used to whip you, the same one that would, that would, instead of taking the whip and strangling slave master with it, he's going to take slave master's whip and whip you for slave master. So you can have a perspective of hate your brother and never unite because oh there's so there's all these disagreements amongst there ain't no disagreement it's agents that you've been listening to that's been selling you out and telling you to blame the boogeyman telling you blame a man that doesn't even exist there's no such thing as a white man on the planet anywhere but have you blamed an invisible man for all the injustices against you when it's your own doing it to you? Canaanite, Phoenician, Africans as Moors. And this is um, by Paul Mark Washington. Legend, the Phoenicians and Canaanites are known as the same people and the images E and H show they are African by their full features. The Phoenicians established Carthage and settled Spain and the images on this page below show Hannibal as African in 500 BC, a stone carving of a Phoenician in Spain also African. In the throne room of Saragon I in Khorsabad in the 7th century BC are shown ships. A. One is a row, one is rowed by Africans. B. The other large ship reminiscent of those seen of the Spanish Armada of the 15th century. Most who would become the quote-unquote Spanish entered Spain from the landlocked Russian steeps perhaps near 400 AD from the ships we see made and used by Africans on the web page A and B and images throughout the Mediterranean North Africa and Spain we would expect that the shipping presence in Spain was the Semitic Phoenicians also known as Canaanites are they are there later Moors was it these Phoenicians, Africans, who provided the ships that would later be used by the Spanish Armada? Are the ships and seafaring skills shown by the Spanish initially from 7000 BC African four more shipbuilders and navigators? Are they collectively the Casimo people, C-A-P-S-E-M-O peoples, i.e. Canaanites? Africans, Phoenicians, Semites, or Moors. A single seafaring people that colonized the Near East and Europe of the South, West and North, whose sameness is lost in unrelated labels. So there you can see the Spanish Armada And then you have the Moorish ship, then you have the Phoenician ship. And all they're doing is showing you that it's the same people. They're no different. Style of the ships are the same. So obviously they're the same people. Now these people want to have you not be who you are. Now the other thing that they brought up in their little crap is this concept of you know Moors being sellouts 
to Romans. Now, from the villa of Romana del Casal in Sicily, Italy, 300 AD, note, the emperor's guard on the right has on what appears to be the mask of a quote-unquote white person. The meaning is unknown as it is what as is whether it was installed by modern quote-unquote restorers so these are some people that they showed in Rome you know can't really tell could be Europeans you know just a depiction drawing By now, we know that all of these marble statues and busts of supposed Greeks and Romans in museums are really 1600 to 1800 creations, supposedly copies of bronze originals. But we can't help but wonder, what happened to the originals? What after the marble copy was made, they, they destroyed the original? We of course contend that they are purposeful frauds intended to convince the world that Europeans have a long and glorious history and were involved in earliest civilizations, which is of course pure fantasy. So here's some more Romans right here. But these are actually now figurines and stuff now. This is actually now Things depicting features. Now, if that's a European, if that's a European, meaning somebody pale, then we're crazy people. Etruscan or Greek. Right, this is a this is somebody from Greece right here. You know that they're talking about you know the Moors and the Europeans, the Romans. Then the Moors helped the Romans and their sellouts to the Romans. Well, these are the Romans that were that we were dealing with. So which which lets us know that it's the same infighting. That we got going on today. That they say history repeats itself. Any Europeans involved in anything having to do with us? It's all us doing it to ourselves. This is a Greek. Now, if you think this is some pale individual, why are they gonna make it of bronze? Some more Greeks, you know, drawings again. They look rather dark to be some pale people. Rather dark. So they play this game of putting you against your own. And remember that the whole idea is for our people to realize once and for all that our collective name is Moors. We're not collectively Africans because we're not all Africans. Why? Why do you say that? Because people on the continent don't call themselves African. So clearly we're not all Africans. Only particular people call themselves African. But again, when you go to all these people in the world, in their language, they have a word that relates to more in their language to describe people who look like us. They do not call them black people or Africans in the world, in whatever language they speak. Roman fresco from Lerarium 
of the house of Ulius Polybius. These are some Romans right here. So as soon as so-called scholars or whatever try to give you this perspective about pale Arabs and pale Europeans and pale people during the time of when we were ruling, coming in and fighting us and all that stuff, BS. It's all our people. Right? Fishermen and sea creatures. Roman mosaic. And Roman again. These look like some pale people to you? Why would they draw these people like this for Rome if they were pale people? Why? Like, why? Because there's no pale people there. And these people continually play their own. Germanic Gaul mercenary. No. German. Oh, he has the cross. You don't care if he has a cross. Ethiopia had cross for year, f millions of years before some Christianity and some European Jesus. So I don't be seeing a cross and think that that means Christianity that you see today. Right, look at your brother. And again, the collective name of our people is Mars. Right, we're going to put it on the record again because people like to pretend like they weren't told by their so-called teachers, leaders, or whatever. Right? So we'll put it on the record again because people want to play like they don't study. But they have books at their house. They got bookshelves and books forever. That certain people that they call leader, scholar, master teacher or whatever, wrote. But they don't read their stuff. But they say they honor people. They want to carry their coffin when they die. Don't let any dirty moors carry my stuff. Carry my urn. Because I'm going to be a cremation. You know, playing around with no people trying to touch stuff. Forget all that. Right, these guys playing games. Right, there's the book, Africa, Mother of Western Civilization, Dr. Ben, who all these niggers say is their master teacher. All of them say that they rep him. All of them say that they rep him. We're going to play around with people's birthright. All this suffering going on. And not tell the people that they're Moors. You got Moroccan flag in your house. All these so-called white man dictionaries and all that. And you're not going to tell the people that they're Moors? Must be an agent. Must be an agent. Can't be anything else. Because you know better. In analyzing that which is called Greek philosophy, one has to constantly remember that a latter group of indigenous Africans of North Africa called Moors had preserved much of their ancestors, the Africans of the Nile Valley and Great Lakes High Cultures, teachings about the mysteries the Moors this is Dr. Ben's own words the Moors preserved much of their ancestors much of their ancestors mysteries the Moors preserved the stuff not the, not the, not the blacks not the Africans not the Nubians. The Moors. This is Dr. Ben. But, you know, they don't honor their own because they're agents. They just want photo ops and views. Unfortunately, most of the works by the Moors remain untranslated into the English language from the Arabic language, which the African Moors adopted after their conversion to Islam. 
thereby denying most of the information to the average English reading public. This had allowed those who have control of such information to distort such information to appear that their ancestors were in fact the originators of the Africans of Egypt and other Nile Valley high cultures. The works in question included treaties and compendiums in science, medicine, pharmacology, astronomy, law, and other branches of the seven liberal arts. The seven liberal arts. So that's not something that just more just throw in there because it says seven. It's an actual thing. Dr. Ben even knows about it. Oh, but he would know because he has a doctorate in Moorish history. That all these guys rep, all these guys say they back him, they honor him. He's the centerpiece of their whatever. But he's calling Africans Moors. And he's saying that we're Moors. Oh, but they're, they're not going there with people. You know, keep playing this game that we don't know what we're talking about. And it's there for the upliftment of their people, selling them out. Yet, most of the works the Moors translated from hieroglyphics. Most of the work that the Moors translated from hieroglyphics. So in order to translate from hieroglyphics, you have to be able to read hieroglyphics. So Moors knew how to read hieroglyphics. How would Moors know how to read hieroglyphics? Because the same goddamn people. Same culture. Phoenicians, Canaanites, Kemetans, Cushites, Nubians, all of them are the same people. Today, we'll say that they're Moors. When those cultures were flourishing, we call them what they were called when their time was flourishing. That time's over now. Other, academic, other academically great works originating from the compilations of the Moors were translated by Guidio, the monk of Arezzo, in his musical notations. G-U-I-D-E-O, the monk of Arezzo, A-R-E-Z-Z-O, in his musical notations. Of course, there are countless others worth mentioning here, but their listing will not change anything at this time. See Tyler and Sedgwick, S-E-D-G-W-I-C-K, History of Science. The African Moors, extensive knowledge of ancient Egypt, was due to their constant cultural exchanges with their indigenous African brothers of Egypt through their caliphates. This is Dr. Ben. The African Moors, extensive knowledge of ancient Egypt was due to their constant cultural exchanges with their indigenous African brothers of Egypt through their caliphates. See Alts, A-U-L-T-S, Europe in the Middle Ages, page 216 to 219. A-U-L-T-S, Alts, Europe in the Middle Ages. It should be also noted that members of medieval European science and other disciplines such as Copernicus, Roger Bacon, Johann Kepler received their source of basic science from African Moors and of course who were of African, Arab, Berber, Moorish stock. But those black guys going to tell you that Berbers are Moors. But Dr. Ben is saying that African Moors are of African, Arab, Berber, Moorish stock. Trying to pull you away from your birthright by any means necessary. All these House of Unconsciousness people, 
the Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation. All you do is debate stuff. They're about, they're trying to bring back the Nile and all this type of stuff when that thing fell so long ago. You trying to resurrect some freaking mummy? They try to bring mummy back to life? Unwrap the mummy and then that's going to be King Tut here again? That's stupid talk. Resurrecting some Nile Valley crap when you have Mississippi River sitting right there. Still flowing. So you guys are playing their people. That's Dr. Ben. The famed historian. Nope, we're not even going to tell you what page. This is the size of the book. Right? And this is the name of it. Since he's with the ancestors now, how about go get his book? I'm not giving you no page number in the book. Go get the book. Honor the master teacher. If, if that's what he is to you. Because he told you that Africans are Moors. And Arabs and Berbers are of more stock. This is Dr. Ben, who everyone says that they honor and respect and all that. But they're not going to say that they're Moors, though. They're going to make up every excuse to get you to not be Moors. Right? Roman Emperor. Okay. Oh, the nose, the lips. And... Okay. Right, this is this is the Roman Emperor, right? Now remember, they're talking about the frauds of making stuff look different in order to sh make it seem like you know, pale people had some type of say in ancient times, right? Well, here's the same emperor. Who's the same emperor? So, if this is the emperor that was around during the time that these clowns are talking about then the stories that they've been getting about Rome is obviously false the stories they've been getting that European that Romans are pale people is obviously some figment of their imagination right. here's a Roman in bronze again which is in the Museum of Fine Arts in Lyon France right. now you gotta wonder you know what I mean like this is European showing this Roman with the locks everything clearly this is not somebody pale clearly and just in case you know, well, I don't know, that one didn't, I can't really tell with that one. Okay, here's another one. Just so you can, you know, you know when you could see up the nostrils that that's Asiatic. Dark skin. You know. But people are going to play this game, deny you your birthright, under the guise of, you know, give you your history right. now keep in mind they were talking about you know it's, it's amazing that they can you know talk about all this stuff where is this and where is that and where is the Moroccan Empire how come there's no whatever but you know if you just do your research or whatever real simple you know they got books out there on it you know the Moorish Empire right? Moorish Empire, a historical epitome. The Moorish Empire. You know, they're gonna play this game that they can't find anything about, you know, the Moors. They are gonna agree that Moors are Islamic, right? They're gonna push Moors are Islamic, right? Okay. Well, how about? doing your research on the Islamic Empire and you realize that it's all Moors so all the stuff that they say that they can't find is because they're looking for it under black and you're never gonna find anything historical under black 
But if you look up on the Islamic, well, you'll see you there. Look up Berber, you'll see you there. Look up Arab, you'll see you there. Look up Ottoman, you'll see you there. And all those are relative to Mars. But they're going to say they can't find anything there. Right? They can never find anything. They can never find anything on the Moroccan Empire. You know? They know that we don't say that we're Muslim. You know, more say that they're Muslim. Okay, well, how about looking up Muslim Empire? Yeah, and all these other books, and then again, you know what I mean? Just go look them up and go get the books. That there is a Muslim Empire. There's an Islamic Empire. You know, and clearly, clearly, you know, there's... Egypt right there, you know, so Egypt's in it, right, Persia's in it, right, all these places that they're going to claim is pale or whatever, Arabs came and, Arabs came in and they did stuff, right, only Arabs I know look like this, I don't know what Arabs you're talking about, this is what Arabs are to me, all those late people that they're trying to say are the ones invaders and all that stuff, get the hell out of here. We've been in fighting forever. It's nothing, you know what I mean? This is what it is. This is what it is. You know what I mean? Everybody got in fighting. Ain't no big deal. You know? That's why things are supposed to change. We're supposed to do things under the same banner. What's the same banner? Moors. Say Moors and then say that you're whatever you want to be. And once again, Arab. Just Arab. So if this is Arab, who are these pale people that these guys are talking about that came and invaded something? And then people going with it. Like that's something legitimate. But, you know, just they also say that they honor this man and and um Hannibal was abandoned and he committed suicide but very significant was the eventual movement in Europe by the Moors and I want to say a lot about the Moors the Moors that there again greatly misunderstood who were the Moors. The Moors are a mix of people. In the Sahara, there were people known as the Garamantes. These are indigenous black people. However, there came in some fair-skinned Libyans. They're both black Libyans and fair-skinned Libyans. These people came in and they were known as the Tawny Moors. Okay, the white Moors or the Tawny Moors, but they're, the vast majority were black Moors, the Caramantes. Then, um, at first, the Arabian Peninsula was peopled strictly by blacks. Then came another group coming in, and by the time of Muhammad, the blacks were a minority in Arabia. So you have an Arabian type that comes into play. You have two types. Of in, in Arabia, both a dark skin type and a fair skin type in the time of Muhammad. And in fact, it is the fair skin type that runs against Muhammad and pushes him into Ethiopia. Muhammad runs into Ethiopia, just as Jesus went to Egypt. Both prophets go into the fastnesses of Africa when they were in trouble. And you find Muhammad retreated into Ethiopia, he and his disciples and eventually charged back again and conquered his enemies. After his death, the ideas that inspired him were to spread over the world. It was to spread over the world because many of the Mohammedans or Muslims came into various parts of the world and tried to convert people. They went into India, they attacked India. They went into, they went even as far up as into China, they went into Africa, they intermarried with Africans, and eventually, the major part of the story occurs around 711 AD, when 
an African general, Tariq, is sent out across the Straits of Gibraltar with 7,000 troops. 6,700 of them are black Africans, 300 are other types, probably fair-skinned Arabian types. I use the word Arabian versus the word Arab because anyone can be an Arab, anyone speaking Arabic. They move up into Spain, they conquer Spain. Now, you, if you go to Spain, you're going to find the same problem that you... Well, now keep in mind, you never hear them say Arabian. They always say Arab. Arab. Pale Arab. Pale Arab did this. Pale Arab did that. The Moors are following the pale Arab. There's no such thing as a pale Arab. Because anybody could be Arab. According to the master teacher, Ivan Van Sertema, who's also with the ancestors now, but they say that they honor him. No. They say that they respect these people. And these individuals that they say are their master teachers are speaking extensively about the Moors and in a positive light. But these people are going to diss your birthright. Finite minds cannot comprehend infinite. The only way finite would comprehend infinite is when finite becomes infinite. Until finite becomes infinite, anybody with finite minds, they will be lost and taken advantage of mentally. Fine with the Egyptians. They don't want to hear anything about the Moors. They don't want to hear anything about the Moors. Because the Moors, as far as they were concerned, and they don't seem to understand, they don't want to go and check out what actually these guys brought into them. They don't want to hear anything about it. Yet all of our pictures of these Moors are drawn by the Spanish. Because the Muslims forbade the creation of images. So when there's the surrender of the Moors, it's drawn by the Spanish. Black generals surrendering. Now, if they weren't in charge and they were not the Moors, how are they surrendering? It's like if the Russians come here and we're supposed to surrender, who do, who do you think is going to do the surrendering? Could we surrender this country to them? I mean, it's so absurd. I mean, when you see these black faces, it's amazing. It's like this book I read when I was studying the Moors. I read this book by this English woman. A big book for 300 pages. The Moors are fair skinned with straight noses and blue eyes. Then things go bad and the Moors are being pushed back. And one says it's a big battle and then you start me the sentence, tremendous slaughter of the Africans. Where the hell did they come from? I mean, I mean not a pause, you know, no flutter of the eyelid. Now the thing is going down. Everybody is black. You find it in, in England too, you find it when you go into the museums. As soon as they reach the point where the Sudanese pharaoh, they have period of decline. Period of decline. Okay, it's going to the dogs, it's going to the blacks. And there, there is no, I mean, I'm telling you, this thing has become so, uh, it's become a reflex. They don't even realize there's anything. I, like, I remember I had a when I was in Guyana, I, I, my boss, um, one of my bosses um, was uh, in charge of a certain section of information services. And then when I went to, to in, information services in England, um, there was this Englishman coming down the steps and says, I hear you from Guyana. I said, yes. He said, uh, um, Jusa, your boss, um, marvelous fellow, isn't he? I said, yes said, jolly nigger, isn't he? He didn't think, he, he, he didn't, he, he was jolly nigger. Not his mean to say, isn't he a marvelous chap? He's always laughing, as niggers do. He didn't see anything wrong in that, jolly nigger. And he's telling me that, you know. And, and, uh, and I said to him, perhaps he appeared so. <laughs> because I can't say anything else because I'd lose my job right and then that's the second time because the first time was with our master teacher 
Taj Tariq Bey that had a sit down with Ivan Van Serdema. And Ivan Van Serdema told him when Brother Taj was asked, when well, Brother Taj asked about why don't you just come out, Ivan Van Serdema, and say that the people are Moors? Why are you saying all this other stuff? Why don't you just tell them that they're Moors? Because if I did that, I will be deported. Remember, he said himself, they don't want to talk about, don't bring up the Moors. You start bringing up the Moors, when you start bringing up M-O-O-R-S, watch how Europeans get the twitch. Or the, the wide eye, or whatever reaction that is going to shock their system, because that's not supposed to be something that you know. Just go try it. We challenge you to try it. Stop a European and just ask them, hey, you ever heard about Moors, or, you know, Tell me something about Mars, or just ask them and let them tell you. Let them get the twitch because you're not supposed to know that word. It's not even supposed to be something that's even accessible. But you mention that and see what happens. Because it's a fact that that's who we are. In the world, it's a fact. Not just because we're saying it here and Noble Drew Ali or whatever. In the world, it's a fact that our people, people who look like us, are Moors. If they don't want to be that, it's all right. No problem. Continue to suffer. And the ones who know that they're Moors will be sitting back watching you suffer. Just because our people are so behind the curve that they don't even know what's coming. But, you know. They're going to keep following these clowns, telling them that that's not who they are. Even though all the teachers came and told them that that's who they are. You know, on numerous occasions. But, you know, it is what it is. And we will continue. Continue on. You know. And by the way, that was, um, that was... Dr. Ivan Van Serdema, Africans, Moors, Blacks in European History. Africans, Moors, Blacks in European History. I personally have learned about Timbuktu and Egypt and all types of stuff in school and outside of school. But the Moors aspect is something that I didn't really learn about till late. Probably when I was about 20, 20 years old. So, it seems though the European has been very, very successful at hiding this quote. You hear about the American Indians. You hear about all types of shit in here in America. But you won't hear about this Morris aspect. And if you do, you hear about it. It'll be some Arab shit. So, they've been real successful with hiding this Morris history from our people. And this is why I got to ask the questions I ask of y'all. Because it's so foreign. This is YouTube. This ain't seasoned vets coming to a C. Freeman L. lecture or a Hakeem Bay lecture. This is a, a 15 year old who might turn on his computer for the first time. He know about red and blue pill and all of a sudden y'all start talking about morals. He don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Because they've been so successful with hiding this Morris history. I done heard every term in the book. But the Morris, this Morris thing, and maybe that's why it's harder for me to grasp, personally. Because I didn't hear about it till later, later in life. I heard about metaphysics before I heard about Moore's history and steady Moore's history. So, why do you think it's been such an ongoing campaign to... Because I asked earlier about the, you know, there's always the interchange, interchangeable, the Moors and the Blacks. The Blacks and the Moors, the Moors and the Blacks. Are we the same mofos? Why had why have they been so why has it been an ongoing campaign? Because we know about Egypt, we hear about all these kings and queens, we hear about a lot of things. But this Moorish aspect is kinda unknown to even the conscious quote unquote conscious folks out there. So what's going on with that, y'all? Ask the same questions many and plenty of times. And you know, from me being able to extract a story from here and a story from there, sit back and analyze it, 
the best thing that I'm able to make sense of why it's the quote unquote biggest threat is because it's the unifying factor. It's the glue that binds. And when I say that, what I'm saying is that it's what ties us to the land, you know? And that single-handedly is the biggest factor in the particular theft. Oh yeah, and in case you didn't recognize, this is um, Red and Blue Pill, the truth about Mars and our connection to America. So this is Red and Blue Pill, who, you know, represent with the House of Unconsciousness and all that, but you don't hear them going at Red and Blue Pill, but clearly they know about Mars. That statement that he just made, clearly he knows about Moors and what being a Moor really is to our people. He wasn't speaking some religious whatever, constitutional whatever, and none of that crap. It's the glue that binds. It's the unifying factor. But they're not gonna go at they're not gonna call them out when they're doing their little this Mars videos. You know, they're 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 gonna chill with they're gonna chill with them. Moors. Who are saying that more is a unifying factor. You know, we heard about all these other stuff. Why we just call ourselves Moors? You know, not the necessarily the the mineral thefts, not necessarily the ideological theft or the intellectual thefts or what have you, but when you talk about the land and when you talk about the unifying factor of us with our quote-unquote brown brothers if you know what i'm saying for lack of a better term all right when we're able to see ourselves as designees to this particular land and we're able to see ourselves as being able to lay particular um rights to these lands not only here in quote-unquote north america north america but throughout Americas throughout the Americas and the Caribbean period um, I think that uh, You know the more and more that our people are only led to pay attention To the continent across the Atlantic Then they never will be mentally oriented to say Well, hold on like if I'm here and X amount of my ancestors have died here You know what I'm saying then maybe I have ties to this particular content as well or hold on and if I have particular ties to this particular continent, you know, maybe I should be getting some of these mineral rights. Now, hold on. And if I'm getting some of these mineral rights, then maybe my claims, you know, to my restitution will not just be for the mid-Atlantic slave trade, but my, maybe I might want the trillions of dollars in petroleum that are underneath Texas alone. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you know different parts and things of that nature so i think that yeah the crops and everything is that nature i think that it deals more so with the land the land of the moors the more land and um you know that's the biggest threat not only the history but what comes out of people making that connection you know what i'm saying of connecting those dots to say hold on you know my people from here then that changes everything you know what i'm saying and then um you know that 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 re re reorient in your focus, where you got your back turned to your homeland and you looking across the water to where your ancestors ancestors came from, you know, then maybe you could even start using the ancestors of this land. Maybe you could start, you know, paying homage and respect to your grandfather, your great grandfather, and his father. You know what I'm saying? We're not even oriented to think like that, let alone pay respect to your nana and what have you. You know what I'm saying? Like you're only thinking about you know what happened in the 1500s and and you know our great ancestry over there but you got two hemispheres of your brain you know what i'm saying there's a western hemisphere <laughs> and the eastern hemisphere you can start making these connections and unifying these ancestors in your own mind and your magic can really start turning on i feel that you know the morris thing is a smoking gun you know what i'm saying let's keep in mind that we're talking about rewriting you know or reimagining history okay i'm gonna briefly take you through it 7-eleven a group of north africans and west africans berbers and other adherents of islam so it's clear that you know it's known right it's clear that it's known now 
And we want to also put out there um, there's a book that you can go get PDF book and it's called ancient geography so let's go Google that ancient geography PDF and then it'll come up All right now I'm just gonna read this the name Africa was at first applied by the Romans who received it from the Carthaginians to the district near and around Carthage but it was afterwards extended to the whole continent in more ancient times the whole southern coast of the Mediterranean from the mouth of the Nile to the Atlantic was called Libya a narrow strip on the northern coast of the continent was the only part of which the Greeks and Romans had any knowledge except on the east side where Egypt and Ethiopia extended southward more westerly division was called Mauritania or Maurit Mauritania ie the country of the Mori or Morsi Morasi said to be from Greek black where whence are terms more and Morocco the western part of the provinces was called tin tingitans and the eastern Caesarian sis though this district through this district from west to east ran the Atlas Mountains which gave name to the Atlantic Ocean a smaller range Atlas Minor diverged in a northerly direction to the Prectum Gadatanum Strait of Gibraltar and Abia one of the pillars of Hercules among the towns which were little which were of little importance were Sala Siga once the residence of King Sphinx King's Fax Cicera, Thapsus, and Salde. Of the western coast lay the ins Insulae Fortin Fortunte, supposed to be the Canary Islands. The district of South Mauritania, and indeed the whole central part of Africa, was called Getula. Numidia, the land of the nomads, Algeria, lay between Mauritania and the province of Africa proper Africa Provincia Tunis and Tripoli was the territory immediately adjoining Carthage so it's clear that when and Islam to brother Casanova Bay for that it's clear that when we start getting into um, more means black you're talking about Greeks right that, that's just what it is so if you're not Greek that should not be your concept of what more is if you if you're not Greek if you're Greek then hey, you know what I mean okay um, testimonial brother Jamil Bay sent this with regard to his testimonial um, yesterday Monday the 5th I had an encounter with the slave catchers slash highwaymen thugs three of them it was it was brief but it could have been a situation had I not handled it the way that I did I was traveling on my way to Lowe's hardware when my travels were hindered by the unmarked truck that had been following me for a few blocks before they decided to use those, use those investigation lights to stop me. I didn't know that they were slave patrollers up to that point, so-called undercovers. I stopped my conveyance, they got out of the truck and yelled, do you have a passenger, which he knew I didn't at the time, 
I was looking through my side rearview mirror at him and he was looking at me through it because I just shook my head no to the question as they cautiously, uh, cautiously approached from both sides. When they got to the window, they saw a MAN, man, Moorish American national, with a turban on, to their surprise. He, the lead slave catcher, asked how I was doing, and the look I gave him let him know, so he didn't wait for an answer, but instead asked me if I had ID. So quickly, I asked him if he had ID. He said yes, and I asked to see it never once calling him an officer. He showed it to me and asked me for mine again, so under threat, duress, and coercion, I gave it to him, my nationality card. He looked at it and said, oh, you're not from around here, are you? Kind of like a question and a statement mixed in. And I said, I'm actually from everywhere. So as he's looking at my ID, he asked if I had any other ID. And I asked, if he had two IDs, all by being calm, and my tone wasn't threatening or confrontational, but serious. So he, ha see, he asked if I had a driver's license, and I said, a driver's license now, you know, that's a fraudulent instrument. So why would I have one, and clearly I'm not driving. He did a double take, and put a finger to his ear, like he did, like he did hear me, like he didn't hear me, so I repeated it and looked at his buddy, took my card and told his buddy to watch his back. He walked to the truck and did whatever he was doing in the truck for two minutes or so, came back, handed me my real identification and politely said, have a good day, Mr. Bay. I wanted to record it but didn't want to be reaching for my phone because it's a big black galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm telling the story instead of having everyone just listen to the encounter so obviously they know Islam Islam and you know brother Jamil's in clan town so for him to have that happen you know is a clear sign it's a clear sign that nationality is the order of the day and nationality can stop bullets can stop getting baton to the head can stop pepper spray can stop getting arrested for nothing can stop all these racial profiling stuff and carding that we keep complaining about it's been happening to us by these slave, same slave catchers who we know who we know from our you know, studying that, you know, police come from the slave catchers of, of slavery, for real. We know that. So it's the same people, just with an up-to-date suit, up-to-date badge, up-to-date car, up-to-date uniform, you know what I mean, up-to-date gun, and other, you know, weapons of choice that they have at their disposal. And this brother didn't have a license. He gave them a nationality card. But keep in mind, he said that he wasn't talking confrontational. You know, like some people <coughs> I segment talk confrontational, kill crackers, shoot crackers, and blow up police stations and all that stuff, and then get kidnapped. And then Black Power is not doing none of that kill cracker stuff after they kidnap her, you know. Convenient. Right? Rapper guy talking crap on album, get locked up because he's talking crap, didn't even do nothing that he said he was talking about in the music, but you know, convenient. It's because of dealing with yourself in a dead status. The brother had a nationality, like all civilized human beings on the planet, all civilized human beings on the planet have a nationality and until you have a nationality you're not gonna know what it means to have a nationality because we can we can have all the mores that are on the stream right now send your email with a testimonial that happened in the past two days and we'll have 
inundated email of all these Moors telling their story about how they showed their nationality card and something went in their favor. Yeah, we got a couple that's going to have something, you know, didn't happen how it went, but didn't stop them from exercising their right, regardless of what the threat was. Because the order of the day is what's your nationality. And if you do not have a nationality, remember, the the black power idiots, they're going to tell Moors, oh, these Moors, they only go to, you know, district court. And we went and we checked the cases. If the Moors are international, how come you're not in international court? How come you're not going to this court and that court from an international perspective? Why aren't you in there? Since we're talking international black guys, black power guys, international community put out the United Nations declarations of rights of a child of human beings and of indigenous peoples and all three of those international documents require that you have a nationality but they're not gonna bring that up they're gonna ask more as why we're not going to international court you know, even though all the stuff in district courts getting thrown out and all that stuff all the stuff in federal courts getting thrown out all the stuff in municipal courts getting thrown out there's enough Moors who we know that's been... Yeah, you're going to get some that get locked up, arrested, whatever. But, hey, that's not going to stop me from exercising my birthright. Because a Moor got arrested, a Moor got whatever. But why, why is that going to stop me from being a Moor? A Chinese guy get arrested. Oh, so the Chinese are going to stop being Chinese? They're going to be yellow people? I doubt that highly. Highly. The proof is what's your nationality the international community if you're challenging mores how come we're not in international court because you black guys are bringing up international we're going to ask you how come you don't have a nationality because if we're going to international court that is a prerequisite because we're not seeing black guys in international court either and and black guys aren't even beating their little tickets in the low level court so forget even talking about or bringing up international court, Dr. Reggie, until you take your black comedic status in a court and beat a ticket or beat some taxes. Just do that. Show me something. Show and prove that you're comedic. Go out there, get a ticket, and then go to the white man's court and beat your ticket. If, you know, you're comedic. It's not a large request I mean if that's your identity and you're claiming that you're comedic or Hebrew Israelite or black or whatever take that status and go to any level court for we're not even gonna go international we'll keep it easy for you go to any court municipal district federal Supreme Court of some state of whatever and prove on the record that they recognize your comedic status. You just want to see, you know. Because, you know, you know, to Hootie, that's, that's a comedic status. And, you know, he's, he's, he got time and with his comedic status. His name's to Hootie, and they ain't recognize that. Keep in mind that 1913, since 1913, over a hundred years ago, Nobu Jawali came and told all these people in the Americas that are classified as Negro, Black, colored people, Africans that came over here on a slave ship, that you're not that. Change your position to Moors. Nah, guys have the funny hats, the bucket hats and all that stuff. We are listening to them. All right, we'll see who suffers. We will see who suffers. Right. Um, Islam, I recently proclaimed my nationality 
and put my status on the record. I sent my papers to the seven locations that I received from RVB Publications. The Supreme Court returned my name declaration, judicial notice proclamation papers, along with this letter and a book, Rules of the Supreme Court of the United States. My question is, can you help me get a better understanding of what this means and why I need and what I need to do next? Now, the letter from the Supreme Court of the United States Office of the Clerk, Washington, D.C., September 23, 2015, says, Sela, Sala, Tenny, Bay. Mailing location, Dallas, Texas. Re, legal notice. Dear Miss Bay, in reply to your letter or submission received September 14, 2015, I regret to inform you that the court is unable to assist you in the manner you present. Under Article 3 of the Constitution, the jurisdiction of this court extends only to the consideration of cases or controversies properly brought before it from lower courts in accordance with federal law and filed pursuant to the rules of this court. The court does not give advice or assistance or answer legal questions on the basis of correspondence. Your papers are herewith returned. The rules of this court are enclosed. Sincerely, Scott S. Harris, Clerk. And then signed. Right. Signed by Jacob C. Travers, who's not the name under sincerely <laughs> so what these individuals are letting you know one is that the Supreme Court deals with cases or controversies you don't have a case or a controversy with the Supreme Court or do you have a issue that was brought to a lower court being moved from the lower court to the higher court because of the nature of the subject matter of the case so they sent your stuff back they sent your stuff back to Tenny Bay written correctly not in all caps just like how they have Supreme Court of United States written in all caps right they have sincerely Scott S. Harris clerk written properly. They got a signed Jacob G. Travers. So this is a letter that you can use as proof that you've received mail in your free national name from the Supreme Court. This stands as precedent that you are who you say you are when you say that you're Salah Tanibe. Excuse the mispronunciation. This letter can be used as precedent. So let's say, for example, you, somebody says, I need to see ID or whatever. And you say, nationality card. And they say, this isn't real ID. I need to see real ID. Oh, here's this uh, letter that I got from the Supreme Court of the United States, Office of the Clerk, signed by them. The name on this letter matches the name on this card. The Supreme Court is going to recognize this name. And whoever this individual is that you're dealing with that doesn't want you to accept your stuff is obviously below the Supreme Court. Now they have no claim. Because your claim supersedes their claim. And you have something from their jurisdiction, Supreme Court, backing your claim up. So don't get too misdirected by their responses that they make 
that seem to be contrary to why you're sending stuff, really they just sent this so they don't acquiesce. Because if they sent nothing back, then anything that you sent them stands as law, even if they sent it back to you. So this is as well a tactic that they use in order to not be in default. Because if, they de in de if they're in default, or if they default on your claim, then your claim stands as law. And it's the Supreme Court you're dealing with? Definitely stands as law. So don't take it as negative. Take it as they just gave you something. So you make copies of that. File it. Right? Have little copies everywhere. So at least that way, you know, if the original gets lost, you still have a copy. And that copy can be used side by side with your nationality card to prove that that's your identity anywhere that you go and if you have the envelope still keep the envelope too to show that it actually came from them it's not something you just typed up you know just because you felt like making up some fake letter to prove that you're a more and that's how I would use that letter as far as the locations when you send your copies of your proclamation to the individuals who you're putting on notice that you corrected your status you're going to be sending it to individuals other than the seven that RV Bay publications instructs you to send to anybody else you're sending to them for the same reason put them on notice let them know of what your claim is but if you don't have a matter in a court there's no need to send any of those stuff to any court because you know half those courts aren't courts and another thing that you could look at is you know them sending you the rule book for the Supreme Court now you didn't ask for that they're sending that to you why as a courtesy so that you know what the rules are to the game that's being played. Find me a Negro that they're going to do that to. And that black guy is going to send some stuff to the Supreme Court. And that they, they're, most times they'll just acquiesce. Because what, what, do, what, what do you, you know what I mean? No, no, no Negro black colored individual is going to have nationality paperwork. Because black's not a nation. Negro's not a nation. African's not a nation. You know what I mean? If they send them anything, it's going to be something from their lawyer. Which admits the jurisdiction of any court that they're dealing with. because Just because they had a lawyer. Right? So, use that letter as proof of your position. Right? Um, now with regard to sealing papers, Canaan land moors do not seal any papers unless they're Canaan land moors papers. So if you have, um, if you have sent papers to the sealer, the vizier, the consul, to get sealed and you're still waiting for them recognize that you have two people doing the work for thousands of people so there's going to be a bottleneck that, that you're not avoiding the bottleneck there is going to be a bottleneck there is going to be backed up backed up backed up backed up backed up stuff just because people are waking up at an alarming rate right now this is not for everyone but the ones that take this serious trust me there's many of them so what you're going to do is if if you've been waiting let's give, let's give it a let's say you've been waiting three months let's say three months 
right? Because remember, we're talking about backlog upon backlog upon backlog over backlog, right? If you haven't been able to get in contact with or whatever like that, you know, because like I'm saying, busy, I don't even talk to those people and I only talk to them if it's the dire circumstance we need to talk. Other than that, I'm studying. I don't have time to be calling them down about anything. It's not, uh, there's no need. You should be studying. You know what I mean? Not worrying about when papers are coming or when cards are coming. Before the card comes, after the card comes, it should be still studying the same. It shouldn't be some, well, when the card comes, then I'm going to get, no. Because if the card takes a year, well, you're not going to study for a year? You're just going to do nothing? Right? So if you have an issue, instead of sending 500 emails, well, that's why we have a show, blog talk show, every Tuesday. 9.30, Wednesdays, 7.30, call in number, 1-347-945-5899, 347-945-5899, and don't be shy, call in, that's why we have a call in number, and bring up your issue, and then they'll tell you that, well, we'll take your number down, we'll call you tomorrow, and then they'll call you tomorrow. And figure out where your stuff is, what's going on. And the other thing that people have to recognize is half the time, you know, again, just like we're talking about, you know, European ain't no enemy other than ourselves, right? When we are in the waiting line for the papers, 85% of the time you're waiting because you messed up the papers. No, and. So much people mess up their papers. And it gets, you know, very tiresome and frustrating when all these people don't know how to follow instructions. And then that lets them know that these people aren't even really studying. So should we even really send them this stuff? Because it's like, you know, I mean, if you're going to take this stuff and get injured, better we don't send it to you. Better we hold it to, and you know, hopefully you're studying in the meantime while you're waiting. And you know, when you get it, it's going to be a surprise because you're not even going to expect it. So don't take it personal. Ain't nobody trying to steal nothing or whatever like that. It's nothing like that. You know what I mean? Like I'm saying, you know, we don't do any sealing or anything like that. We don't do any card things. But when we send our whatever to get our stuff, our stuff comes, you know what I mean? Because... We tell people that if you're going to be sending something to them, make sure your stuff is tight. <laughs> because the mothers don't play. They will hold up your stuff if you are not tight. If you're loosey-goosey with being a more, clear that up immediately. Because they don't play loosey-goosey. Don't worry, just listen to the call. blogtalkradio.com slash M H H S dash eyes wide open at 9:30, and then you'll hear what you know how real it is. So again, don't take it personal, but take it as a as time for you to put some study in, right? While you're waiting, because there's nothing wrong nothing wrong with waiting, right? Nothing at all. And we're just taking some more. For our last little bit, that was the last question. Conscious network, whatever. Um, when 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 you, when when you when you say Moors, they think of the most. They think of the group of blacks that want to measure Europeans, and this is why I say, my brother say, it seems like the Moors want to measure Europeans with a moral compass, and y'all think somehow y'all could negotiate with them. And this is just in general, not just with Obama, but I want to clear the air on this. Um, since we this word keeps getting thrown around, um, it seems like the Moors want to negotiate with the Europeans, as far as paperwork, as far as talking to the, as far as treaties, as far as whatever. And when you deal with, and when you deal with brothers like you know revolutionary brothers, ain't no morality with this European. So what you're saying seems fly. And it sounds great, but to the brother and sister in America 
they don't look at this European like, yo, look at him. Y'all look at him as though I could negotiate with him. If I could somehow prove to him in the system of court, and there's no, I'm not saying nobody's right or wrong, but what I am saying is that the divide that's going on, and I'm trying to address it. Okay, plug it in. When y'all go to the court, y'all, oh, I, if I could just prove to him somehow, some way, then I could convince the judge that this and he'll do this and him do that. Then there's a group of blacks like, y'all niggas is crazy. I understand what Obama said. I understand what y'all said. But there's no moral compass with this European. So I'm trying to figure out. Is it, do the Moors look at the European as there's a moral compass? Or is this something that can only be resolved in one way, in that way that nobody wants to talk about? Same niggas just voting. Alright, these be the same niggas paying taxes. It'd be the same niggas talking about no justice, no peace. So my thing is this. Like if your parameter for justice is always the court system, if you always want to crawl your ass up in the court system to get you some justice, why criticize somebody that has a method? Right? That you could go up in the court system and put this quote-unquote magistrate to the sword. And you're trying to give the person that's going into the system an education about that particular system to say, look, this is who your adversary is. And this is how they're playing these games of smokes and mirrors on you. Because you think they got power based on this. But we're telling you from our personal experience that they don't. This shit is a sham. So we could go up in there, you know what I'm saying, and play a game of Shinobi with him and cut his head off. But guess, yeah, which is noble, but guess who's standing in the way every time that we show up? Negro, blacks, and colors. You understand? That's who he got protecting him in his courtrooms. That's who he's, you know, loftily giving these positions to and things of that nature. So what I'm saying is that, hold on, hold on. I'm saying what we're talking about with Obama is, again, to give people a historical context of a conflict that has been ongoing, an inquisition is still taking place, right? Till today, to give you an idea of how that shit took place from that shore and is continuing on this shore, you could take it or leave it. The bomb's still gonna fall on your head at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if that's what the name of the game is, if that's, a, that's how they're trying to line it up. And if you're a revolutionary, then that's something that you gotta accept anyway. You feel me? So, I don't think that us talking about a history lesson is acquiescing to the white man. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that us talking about the historical context of a conflict is acquiescing to the European to say, yo, we want to negotiate and contract and what have you. Because like the brother said earlier, the historical context of morals are not necessarily what you see today in terms of how morals are demonstrating and the MST of A and things of that nature. Everybody has their own twist. Everybody has their own approach. And the majority of those Moors do not know Moorish history. They do not. Facts. You know what I'm saying? They don't have no idea, even the shit that we talking about right now, about how it being in a historical day, they, their history don't go back that far. They can't make those connections. It's just, it's like missing. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I you know, I've heard it. You know what I mean? I've heard it many times and what have you. My ears are still open to hear what the alternative is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I broke out of jail in the last 50 years. Yeah, like, I, you know. I'm just saying. Like, do niggas got drones? Yeah. How many jailbreaks were there in the last 50 years? How many Asadas have been pulled out of the system in the last 50 years? How many, how many, how many, how many uh, prison walls got knocked down and they let the whole yard out? I'm, no, what I'm saying is how many how many demonstrations in the courtroom where brothers of a certain uh, school of thought, a school of knowledge, militants and whatnot drag their brother out from the clutches of this beast. So what I'm saying is, if there's you, I've been to court. I've been I've been I've been locked down before. I'm sure that people could relate. Whatever tool that you could use, besides some kosher lawyer to put your fate in his hand. That is the most honorable, revolutionary thing that I've ever witnessed. If you, I, I saw him demonstrate in the court September 10th, 2001. Yo, nobody can never tell me nothing about his heart. 
Nobody can never tell me about him standing on his square. Nobody never could tell me how committed he is to his freedom after I saw what he did in that courtroom and the color that that judge turned off of paperwork. Or for him not acquiescing and admitting that he was some slave-ass Negro. You understand what I'm saying? That was revolutionary, family. Islam taught it, Morris. Peace, love, and hotep. You already know. You already know. Just, just so we could um, let you know again. One more time. For the record. For the record, this is Brother Reggie. Who's down with House of Unconsciousness, the Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation Comedic Can't Prove It with their Comedic ID Negroes. This is his family crest for his last name. And you can see clearly that there's a more on his family crest. So don't let these clowns make you run away from your birthright while they got their birthright in hiding in some closet pretending like they're not Moors. Don't let them fool you all your birthright. You better claim your nationality, because yeah. that's all you got. Ain't nothing left. You know what I mean? Remember, red pill and blue pill. Put it on the record that Moors is the real deal. It's the unifying factor, right? They put it on the record that they've been to court, and they beat cases, and they made magistrate turn different colors or whatever because they use paperwork i don't hear seti going at them i don't hear sanet going at them i don't hear polite going at them i don't hear nobody going at them you know anyway, they are this mars and there's no such thing as moroccan empire but there's mars amongst them that got paperwork beat cases and all that playing games don't let these people play you oh yeah and don't forget sanet has the moroccan flag in the house in every video just you see the red thing that's just it just kind of looks like something from the ceiling no it's a flag on a flagpole it's not some comedic cloth hanging it's a moroccan flag on a flagpole in sanetter's house they know what's up are you gonna study and know what's up like they do or you gonna listen to them tell you about don't be moors while they're moors in the background don't forget, polite and all them, all of a sudden, they got their little little fezzes now and all that type of stuff. These people are playing you guys. Islam to all the Moors, all the active Moors. Islam to the Moors worldwide. 9.30, Blog Talk Radio, about to go in again. I think I just got the, just got the reminder. Keep in mind... Block Talk Radio tonight. One three four seven nine four five five eight nine nine. Call in, ask questions, put whatever you got on the record. Islam to all the Moors that are continuing to study. Peace and love to all the Moors that's been supporting Canaan land. If you are somewhere and you know what I mean this information is vibrating with your spirit, but you've been to more science temples and you know churches going on there or you've been going to buildings you look up in the phone book more science temple you go there and it's a kentucky fried chicken right now or you know you saw more and you said hey more islam and then he's telling you about you know and all that type of stuff and what who's your grand sheik and who's your supreme grand sheik and all that don't worry you could be an honorary member of Canaan Land Moore's Temple. Send an email to our secretary, Grand Secretary, Brother Amari L. Bay, at Amari L. Bay, A M A U R Y E L B E Y, at hotmail.ca or Canaan Land Guide. C A N double A N L A N D G U I D E at gmail.com and ask for the honorary membership form and we'll send that to you so you can at least be a member of something connected to Noble Juali. 
and so you can get some info and get yourself, you know what I mean, in order. And also, too, I want to say Islam to one of my good brothers, you know what I mean, that, you know, we go back and we were on that black stuff. And the brother called me today and said, yo, I watched your class yesterday and that was pretty serious. And I got about 500 million questions or whatever. So Islam to the Moors that are waking up to their birthright because, you know, the spirit's moving right now and grabbing people. Spirits moving. So Islam to all the Moors that are active and studious. Peace, love, and hotep. Let's close out with our with our Moorish American prayer. That oh yeah, for the record, just to put this on the record, Moors out there, old Moors, are gonna talk to you. You know, you're hearing Moors talk about Kujo. Kujo did this. Kujo let sisters wear fezes, and Kujo changed the prayer and all this type of stuff. Know that all these people are agents. Anybody talking against me, anybody talking about Canaan land more is in a negative, know that those people are agents and their job is to divert you, is to divert you from what we're doing because what we're doing is giving you your stuff. We're not selling it to you. We give it to you every week, two hour classes every week, just because. This is your stuff that you need to get back right now. And you need to get on this ASAP because you're 100 years behind. Some of us are only, you know, 80 years behind, you know, 90 or whatever. You know what I mean, some of us are only, you know, 60 years behind. We're trying to catch up to those people. But all you new people, no, you're 100 years behind where you're supposed to be. Because you've been supposed to be more. You're supposed to come out of the womb more. But that didn't happen because of your own selling you out, telling you that you're Negro, black, colored, and all this other stuff. Making sure that you stay Negro, black, colored, so that the European colonizer, inquisitionists, we're not talking about all Europeans, we're talking about specifically the colonizer, inquisitionists that came to this land and raped it. Them individuals, they need our people to be black because that's how they feed because they're vampires and they're leeches. And the only, the only thing that a vampire is gonna go for, the only thing a leech is gonna go for is something that's not able to defend itself. And your nationality as a Moor is a shield. Ask Brother Jamil, who the highwaymen stopped gave him a nationality card and they told him where's your license we need another id okay well i need another id from you like you know what i mean well i don't have another id to give you i don't got another id to give you no shooting up no tasing no nothing like that gave him his stuff back and those guys went about their business why because right now it's checking time who's real and who's fake out here and trust me, all the fakes pretend to be Moors, they're going to get theirs. All the fakes who want to push papers and sell stuff and whatever like that, but they don't know the history of what this is, trust me, they're going to get theirs. It's inevitable. Just like the Negro, Black people, colored people, they're going to get theirs. Conscious community, or their time's coming. Everybody thinks their time's not going to come, but don't worry. Time's coming. Keep playing. It's not playtime right now. Right now, it's either you are either you are a national, aboriginal, and indigenous to some landmass, or you are shadow property to these colonizing inquisitionist foreigners, and you're gonna be that in your own land. Let's close out. Islam to brother. Islam to brother with the shirts. You know what I mean? These are these are exclusive. Sorry, you can't get these ones. These are exclusive stuff. But if you need to see if you know get the print or something, talk with Brother Sheldon L. Or more in Germany, and he'll put you on to how to get it. Know thyself, and thy father got a lot. Five on the left, two on the right. Allah, Father of the Universe, Father of Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, and Justice. 
Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali, Islam. Peace and Hotep. And 20 minutes, Mars will build again Islam. <laughs>